Perhaps you are thinking about homeschooling as something you've thought about for a while, or maybe it's just something that you just recently kind of decided that you might be interested in doing. That's totally cool. I know it can feel very overwhelming, especially when you feel like you're starting from ground zero, basically. You are starting from scratch. You have no idea where to start. Fear not, my friend. I am here. I am your homeschooling BFF. I'm gonna share with you five tips if you are wanting to start homeschooling, but you feel like you are starting from scratch and just have no clue where to start. The very first thing that you need to know is what are the homeschooling laws in your state? Every state is a little bit different. Some states are more homeschooling friendly than others, meaning simply that they make it a lot easier for you to homeschool. They don't require you to jump through as many hoops or just do as much paperwork. It's very different depending on what state that you live in. So you need to know what are the laws, what are the rules, what are the regulations in your state. Um, HSLDA, it's the Homeschooling Legal Defense Association. They have a really great map on their website where you can look at your state and then click on it and find all of the laws and regulations that pertain to you and to your kids in regards to homeschooling. Obviously adhering to those and ensuring that you are protecting yourself and your kids is a very important part of homeschooling and really the very first place that you need to start because it is going to affect the other decisions that you make after this. So you just need to know what's required of you, what's required in terms of withdrawing your children from school if they are currently enrolled in school. There may be a process that you need to go through as far as withdrawing them and letting your city, town, state know that you are going to be homeschooling. Now remember, withdrawing your kids from school and doing all this this is if you have made the decision that you want to homeschool if you are just testing it out for the summer which by the way I think summertime is a great time to do a little bit of dipping your toes into the water of homeschooling and kind of see you know what how you feel about it how your kids feel about it summer can be a great time to kind of test out a little bit actually going through the process of withdrawing your child and checking all the boxes with your state that's obviously something you're gonna do if you've made the decision to homeschool. I will put the direct link down below in the description box to the map so that you can very quickly and easily check out what the laws and regulations are in your state. Number two, you're gonna want to get a little bit of information, a little bit of guidance, a little bit of direction for exactly what you need to be doing or want to be doing for your child. You're gonna hear me kind of um, bounce back and forth in terminology here because if you are homeschooling in a state where you have very loose laws and regulations, as far as homeschooling goes, you have so much freedom in what you do with your child year by year. It really just kind of opens up the whole gamut of possibilities in terms of homeschooling curriculum and, and assessments and all of that. If you live in a state where the laws and regulations are stricter and you have requirements as far as tracking school days and tests and end of year tests, adhering to grade level standards and stuff, if you live in a state that is a, a little stricter in that way, then it's going to limit uh, how freely you can just decide to do whatever you want. There's still so much flexibility, so much flexibility uh, that it can't even uh, be compared, but you're kind of thinking of this as a syllabus for the year. What is it that your child needs to learn throughout this school year? You know, let's just say, for example, your child is in the third grade. What are the standards? What do they need to know? There are, of course, a number of online resources and evaluations, assessments that you can give your child. If you have particular curriculums that you're interested in, a lot of those will have assessments that your child takes before you place them into a level of that curriculum. There are also some really great books. Home Learning Year by Year is going to help you kind of break down and go over exactly what your child should be, needs to be learning, for each year. I hesitate to like send you down the path of feeling like you have to adhere really strictly to these, but I also know that if you're coming to this with like no clue where to start, no nothing, 
it's just sending you out into the abyss of like the world is your oyster can actually feel very overwhelming and not comforting you want some bumpers you want some parameters you want a guide so using a book like that or using a curriculum that has things laid out for you uh, can be easier when you are just getting started so that you don't feel like you're just throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks and we go over all of this kind of stuff uh, building the framework helping you to figure out the curriculum that is going to work best for your child uh, based on your teaching style your child's learning style this is all stuff that i go over in my home education course it's a six week course it's for beginners or veterans who just want to like overhaul their homeschool from a to z so you can check that out down below in the description box we go very deep into each of these areas um, so that you can feel really confident with that said as far as getting direction, um, there are so many different, honestly amazing curriculums out there. The homeschool curriculum world is one of my favorite worlds to be in. I really love trying new things and testing things out. It's part of what I share about homeschooling too, is some reviews of different things. But I would really encourage you that um, if you are wanting to kind of figure out what to do, there's so many factors that go into whether or not a curriculum is going to work for you and for your kids. Um, and you don't want to just Google pick something and spend what could be, you know, not too much money to like hundreds of dollars on a, you know, full box curriculum just to find out that that's not at all the style of curriculum that works for you. So um, like I said, we kind of go over this more in depth in the course, but there are lots of um, free curriculums out there even. There are some free online things, uh, some places like The Good and the Beautiful that offer some of their language arts and stuff for free online. You get the digital version, you just have to print it yourself. Uh, there are various ways to do that for a little less money. Um, you can also go check out a a homeschool used bookstore. They're not everywhere, but if you have one local to you, that'll help you to be able to actually like get your hands on some curriculum and flip through some things and make some decisions. Uh, but honestly, okay, I'm just gonna give you like bare bones, all right? So if you're like, I'm not ready to take the full course yet. I'm not, I, I don't even have a homeschool curriculum store near me. I, I don't know what to do. You can literally go to Costco and buy the grade level workbook you know, the thick workbooks. You can get them on Amazon. I'll link some of my favorites down below. Um, and you can just buy them based on the grade level your child is in and just start there, okay? You're just starting with getting some schoolwork type stuff done with your child, getting you into that headspace, them into that headspace. It's totally fine to start with some of those workbooks that you find at Learning Resources or at Costco. Those workbooks have all kinds of great information in them. And that kind of brings me to number three, is that you probably already have a good portion of homeschooling materials in your home that maybe you don't even realize. Because again, when we go to school and when if you went to public school and your kid has been in public school, when you start thinking about it, you think about, well, you're used to seeing the textbooks and all of the things, but you have so many things right in your very own home that are perfect to just start with to again just like get your toes wet get your just start dipping them little tootsies into the water and really just focusing on what you already have at home uh, not necessarily rushing out and buying a bunch of expensive curriculum until you really know what you want um, and you don't even then don't have to buy a bunch of expensive curriculum with the internet you know it is a it is a bit of a two-sided coin that there's some really amazing things and some not so amazing things we're going to focus on the good things which is that there are documentaries there are um, videos on youtube with science science experiments teaching math uh, I mean, there are so many like video type things online that you can go watch totally for free um, to help just kick off, right? To just start the process, pick a topic, you know? Maybe you're just like, all right, listen, let's just talk about ancient Egypt for a little bit. Great, you can make some snacks, you can watch some documentaries, you can read some books. Reading aloud to your children, finding some books, whether they be fiction or nonfiction related to a topic you're learning about, reading aloud to your children, just sitting down and reading to them is hands down the best thing that you can do for them anytime. 
but especially when you're starting to homeschool. If they've been in a public school environment before, there's kind of a whole process of de-schooling that you and your child are gonna have to go through. Sitting down and just reading to them is so incredibly valuable. The benefits of it are more than I could give you in this video and keep it concise in any way. So look around your house. You can do science in the kitchen, again, five minutes on YouTube will give you some really fantastic ideas for ways to do science in the kitchen with your kids. There are so many things that you could be doing right now today without ever having to order a curriculum, step into a bookstore, but if you want to, you can also go to the library, check out books from the library, or just spend time in the library. Bring some paper and a pen or pencil to the library and start digging into some books. Find some topics that are of interest to your child and start digging into those. The truth is, is that kids learn the best and they retain when they are learning based on interest. So if you are feeling overwhelmed and like you're like, I'm not a teacher, I don't wanna do a bunch of worksheets, it's okay, it's okay you're actually not so much we call it, i mean we're homeschool teachers but really we're homeschool guides okay the idea here is that we are guiding our children on their education journey so take them to the library see what they're interested in are they super interested in bugs caterpillars we've got some tadpoles growing in our little pond and my kids are just on this total tadpole kick right now so that's what we're learning about when it comes to like science type information is all about tadpoles they're in our yard it doesn't cost me any money to look that up, to pull out my copious amounts of resource books that did cost me money, but I could get those at the library if I wanted to. So interest-based learning is how all of us, adults included, will learn and retain the best. So start there, don't get overwhelmed. It doesn't have to cost a bunch of money. Use what you have on hand at home to get started. And remember, just because this is what you're starting with doesn't mean that this is what you're gonna do forever or long-term. There's no commitments in terms of like, well, if we start by just using library books and stuff, then I don't wanna do that forever. I will need some framework, yes. But again, this is just to grease the wheels and get you going. Once you've started the kind of like homeschooling and learning at home process, you are going to be able to like I said, be able to assess yourself to know what kind of educator you are, what kind of teacher you are, what your teaching style is, but most importantly, what is your child's learning style? That will help you narrow down the curriculum that you need to use when you can assess your child's learning style and pick curriculum based off of that. Number four kind of goes along with number three, and that is to remember that learning happens in all kinds of ways and all kinds of spaces. It does not have to be something that looks like uh, a school, okay? It doesn't have to be sitting down and doing a worksheet uh, or reading a classic novel. Learning for children especially happens in the world around them and living in the world around them in everything from going on nature walks and just talking, you've got your phone in your pocket, okay, you can Google things when they ask questions, you're like, I don't know, Google it. Um, they also learn really, really well through play. So play games with them. There's so many things that they can learn through playing games. Uh, homeschool games and educational games are some of my favorite things. I do have a lovely cabinet full of them uh, because especially if you have a child who's struggling, you've pulled your child out of school because they're struggling and you feel like you can give them more one-on-one -on -one attention. Well, you've got a kid that's struggling with reading sight word bingo. Uh, we also have a um, sight word like fly swatting game. My boys love it. They get a fly swatter, they get to whack the table, and it, it really does bring a level of fun and sportsmanship and, and games into school that makes it feel less like you know, learning and just more like having fun. But that's, that's how they're actually gonna learn and retain the information. So think outside of the box of what you're used to thinking of as school, as school work. And remember that that learning is happening in all kinds of ways, in all kinds of places at various times of day. Going on field trips to aquariums and museums, uh, just again, just getting out into nature. These things are gonna spark a natural curiosity in your kids. And maybe because of resources or the, what your life is like, it's not so easy to get out and like go on field trips. It's okay. There's so many amazing like online field trips and stuff that you can do from your home that you can watch on your TV, on your computer.
uh, where you can kind of take these virtual field trips. Don't overthink it too much. Um, it can feel like, well, I'm gonna have to bring, I have to make myself a little worksheet so that we have some worksheets so I can assess if they're learning anything on this field trip. You don't always, it's fun sometimes to do that, don't get me wrong, but you don't have to do that. That's not necessary. Um, and with kids, it's really important to remember that just like raising kids and parenting kids, you're planting this seed that is going to take time to sprout and grow roots and then come up out of the ground and then blossom and bloom into this beautiful flower or vegetable or whatever. The point is that it takes time. So if you feel like, oh, I've been homeschooling now for a few weeks and I don't notice any progress, remember, we're assessing the whole child here, not just formal education piece of it. You wanna be assessing your whole child um, for progress and forward motion, which is the goal. Number five is, Take advantage of what is around you in terms of free things, free resources, homeschooling groups. Check in your area to see if there are any homeschooling groups. Sometimes there's, I mean, there's like five different Facebook groups in my area and I live in a pretty smallish town. So there's a lot of like homeschool communities and groups here that uh, you can get yourself plugged into or if you feel like I'm not ready, I'm an introvert, I'm not ready, okay you can just add yourself to the Facebook group or get added to the Facebook group and just watch, you know, just be creepy stalker and watch from a distance. What is everybody else doing? What are they talking about? You could ask some curriculum questions. If you want to a place that's not gonna be local to you at this point, I do have a homeschooling group and online community that you can join if you'd like. Like I said, it's not local to you at this point, though someday I would love to arrange like meetups for people within their communities. You can join that group where you can ask all kinds of questions about uh, curriculum and schedules and all the things that you might have questions about. So there are so many resources available to homeschoolers now that did not exist in the 80s when I was first homeschooled. It felt like there was like three people in the whole state homeschooling. There was not a huge homeschool community. Your kid can take classes at the YMCA. I mean, there's just so many resources and things available to homeschoolers now. So don't be intimidated. Don't be overwhelmed and don't feel like you have to spend a fortune right out of the gate. Now, it's fun to buy homeschooling stuff and I love it. Okay, I love it. I have a ridiculous amount of like resource books and games and stuff like that. But you don't have to do that and you certainly arguably shouldn't do that at the very beginning when you're just trying to get your feet wet and figure out what's going to work for you and how you can make this whole homeschooling thing happen without feeling so overwhelmed and stressed. I am going to link some of my favorite resources down below in the description box for you guys. I'll kind of break it up so that hopefully you can make sense of that to like, here's the free resources, here's some other stuff that we like to use as far as like documentaries or online classes, that sort of thing. But I just, I hope that you can walk away from this video and not feel super overwhelmed. I want you to walk away and feel like you could start homeschooling your kid right now, right this second, if you wanted to, okay? Actionable things that you can do right now without having to spend any money if you don't want to, um, and without having to make any big commitments to anything just yet. Especially if you are coming to homeschooling uh, completely new and like never thought you would do this, never thought that you would be somebody who was gonna homeschool their kids. You always thought that those people were weird, and now you're tempted to be one of those weird people, but you don't wanna be weird. It's okay, we've got you, we're friends, okay? I'm kind of weird, but normal too. So, I mean, I don't feel like I'm really necessarily a good example of somebody to make you feel like being a homeschooler isn't weird, because I'm weird. But I know how to not be weird when I need to. Does that help, okay? Just remember that you are the most equipped person in the world to homeschool your child. You know your child better than anybody else. And I never disparage teachers. I love teachers. I have friends who are teachers. Uh, I think there are some really amazing teachers out there. No one ever will ever care about your child more than you do. No one will ever care about their success more than you will. And no one knows them better than you do. So you are truly the most equipped person in the world to help them and to guide them. And I promise you that you can do this, okay? Don't get overwhelmed. If I can do it, you can do it. That is it for me today, y'all, and I will see you guys again very soon.